And welcome to another edition of Trader Talk TV. Today we've got Ben from Alchemy in the office. Ben, thanks for coming in today. Thank you very much for having me. Today we're talking about transparency, fees and emissions in programmatic advertising. And Ben is going to go through that, uh, the current system, and he's going to talk a little bit about how Alchemy is building something to address that problem. Uh, before we do that, but Ben, can you just give the audience, uh, viewers, a, an overview of Alchemy and what you do down there? Yeah, of course. Um, so I am the CEO and co-founder at Alchemy Exchange. Um, Alchemy Exchange is a decentralized ad exchange. So we use blockchain infrastructure rather than centralized cloud infrastructure services to support digital ad transactions online. And as you say, yeah, what I wanted to talk today was about fees, transparency, and emissions. You Three know, hot think. topics in our Pretty deck. Pretty much, yeah. So I'll put them up here so we don't forget. Not that we will, but um, yeah, fees, transparency, and emissions. I think it probably makes sense to draw the current system out yep. and then show where these kind of pop up. Yep. So if you imagine you have your advertiser here, they more than likely work with a DSP, maybe some kind of targeting provider, ID solution, so a DMP here, an exchange, and then your SSPs. Yeah. Finally, publishes. Yeah. You can see here that just looking at it, there's a lot of hops for if you want to buy or sell an ad, it's quite complicated at the moment. So, with those hops, really comes emissions. So this server is producing emissions, this server is producing emissions, this one, this and one. all the way across, yeah. And really that's because they're repeating processes over and over again. You know, the DSP holds an auction, the DMP is holding an auction, or matching some like. Uh, and this is the carbon footprint we're talking about in the industry, and obviously the likes of Brian O'Kelly and uh, Scope 3 and others are banging the drum about this. There's the amount of sort of hops are causing more power to be used, which is obviously you know, really, which, is, which ends up with sort of in, in greater emissions. Exactly that, in the yeah. industry. And that's some of the work they're doing is really great, kind of seeing how much is being produced. But again, really, then you're just offsetting what we want to talk about is how you can kind of reduce the amount of emissions they're producing. Right. We'll get to that shortly. You then, when this takes place, so if that's the kind of emissions taken care of, that we're seeing that they come from repeated processes. As part of that repeated process, the reason it's happening is because everyone needs to produce a report. And of across the board. Yeah. So you know what happened. You know who bought your ad, you know who sold your ad, you know what fee they paid, you know how it performed, how it didn't perform, view through rate, so on and so forth. But that is likely hooked up with APIs. The issue you have at the moment is there really isn't any kind of persistent data set across the three. So whilst you might get these reports, it might be presented one way by your DSP. So there's a huge discrepancies across all of these sort of uh, um, pieces of the, value, of the supply chain. Exactly that. And these are really servers are kind of black boxes. You don't really know what's going in and going what's happening in these. Yeah. So you're losing your transparency. Mm -hmm. There's some noise created around the discrepancies in the reports. Again, that becomes an issue. The next point really last we left is fees. Each of these servers, businesses, are charging a fee to exist. I think there's anything wrong with that. But kind of as you go hop to hop, you're picking up fees from... Your dollar, your dollar reduces to pennies, basically. Yeah, exactly. Then you end up with one over here. Or yeah. whatever it is, 47% that was in that ISPA yeah. study. So yeah. again, publishers suffer there. Advertisers suffer there. It's not getting as much media for their money. And I think, really, we want to address those issues with what we're building at Alchemy. So... So they're just, just taking, taking a break there. Yes, so these are the three areas that we, what, what the industry is very much obsessed about. Fees, obviously, take mm -hmm. rates from, from, from the PwC report, et cetera. Transparency, a lot of the agencies are demanding, brands are demanding more transparency, and you've got a bunch of consultancies working in that space. And then, uh, you know, they want to know what's going on in, in, the, in the value chain, who's taking what. And it is very much, as you say, a black box. Google being a yeah. perfect example exactly that, uh, yeah. of Adex and their DSP and their SSP. Who knows what's in Google's taken in terms of fees. And then finally, emissions. Like, it is the hot, hottest topic in ad tech right now. Everybody is sort of like trying to be, um, you know, more sustainable, trying to be friendly to the environment. ESG is a huge part of the sort of like the buying process now, and that emission piece is definitely being caused quite a lot by the or to be ecosystem, the programmatic ecosystem. Yeah, definitely. So from an alchemy point of view, then let's talk about how you guys are different because 
you're taking a different approach to this, very much zero in those three areas. So let's yeah. talk about that from an alchemy perspective. So again, I'll try and keep it fairly similar, so hopefully it makes some sense. So again, you have your buyer, let's call them. You have the alchemy infrastructure, yeah. which I'll leave for that for now. And then you have your seller. Oh, okay, that's simple. So really what's happening here is they are servicing a bid request, a bid response comes back. If that response wins, an ad is served on the seller's page or the publisher's page. This is a little bit oversimplified, but really what's happening here, we're using OpenRTB. Yeah. So it fits exactly the same as what you'd see up here. It's right. the same bid object model. Yeah. Nothing really changes as far as the buyer's concerned. So this mirrors this infrastructure. It's what is the sort of wiring behind it that's really the, the, the sort of the, the interesting part. Exactly that, yeah. So then you have pre-bid on the supply side. Yeah. So again, widely used open source has been great for publishers to make yeah. money. It makes what we've built interoperable with the way stuff Right, works okay. Where it gets a little bit more exciting is just around this server. So really what is in this server, nodes if you will, is a number of interconnected nodes. So explain to the viewers what a node is effectively. So a node is just a validator of transactions. Right. So it typically operates under what's called a consensus mechanism, but really that is just disparate servers agreeing with the transaction that took place okay. on a particular network. Right. And that is then these respective nodes are falling into consensus with each other, and then we'll write that information to a blockchain. Okay. If you think about something like Ethereum, it's like Etherscan, which is just the record of every single transaction that ever right. took place on Ethereum. So firstly, the one I want to talk to is go back to fees. Yeah. Because there's far fewer people in between the buyer and the seller, we've been able to reduce the fees quite significantly. Okay. So on the buy side, it's one and a half percent. Sell side, one and a half percent. So if you come into the platform, you're paying 3%. So what that means if you're a buyer is you get more media for your money. And if you're a seller, you're getting more money for your ads that you're creating. So really providing them with an ex existing technology, but much more money. You know, and I've worked at publishers, I've seen it, it gets quite tough when you're not getting 47% of the dollars that you should be. So putting more money back really is the goal there is that there might be fewer ads online. Fewer ads means less emissions anyway, um, and just a better user experience for people that are visiting websites for content. On the emission side of things as well, if we go down to that one, because there's only one node required to complete what you're seeing up there, you in this example, there's four hops. So now we just have one hop rather than four. So your emissions really are coming down because there's just fewer of the same processes taking place. Yeah. Does that make sense? So like, yeah. just less going on. The reason that we're able to do that is because each of these nodes all speak to each other. So when an ad transaction comes in, this one will validate it. We'll then ask three random nodes within the network to say, okay, I've used OpenRTB, we've used pre-bid, this is the price, this is where it was served, this is how it's performed, do you agree with what I'm saying? If they say yes, 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 that data is then written to our ledger. Just a record of the transaction. So this actually lives, if you want to have a look at it, on labs.alchemy.org. One of the big things we had to get around was writing PII to a blockchain. Once it's there, it'll be there forever, which is something that you want to avoid. Um, so what's happening here is as this data is confirmed, it's hashed, written here. So then you have hashed immutable versions of transactions that took place within this network of nodes. That is quite heavy. What that really means is that every single transaction is logged, agreed upon by the network and written to a ledger. So you all of a sudden here, as someone that is buying or selling ads, have can see data. actually what was bought and sold basically. Yeah, and right. also like, this was a winning bid, it's a losing bid, it's a losing bid, winning bid. Why did this lose? How did this win? Yeah what happened here, that is then all queryable by APIs. So you can then gain insights, analysis, whatever it is it might be, at a much more cost-effective rate mm -hmm. because it's agreed upon. You know? And that, again, solves this issue of transparency. You have 
a one, one source of truth where the transactions cannot exist in here if someone had done something wrong, had spoofed a URL. All right. It wouldn't fall into consensus here or here. So or that here. goes back to the point about discrepancies across here. This is actually telling you what's really happening in, yeah. in, that, in that sort of like, in that, that supply chain, basically. Yeah, because if you imagine these reports as ledgers, mm -hmm. everyone has their own version. So what's to say A is more true than B? Yeah. Because there might be IP that's involved in like mm -hmm. your verification mm -hmm. services. You can't give away everything without seeing everything. So you have this issue of discrepancies between servers and reports. So again, because everyone is contributing to this one ledger, yeah. this then becomes all of those reports. It's queryable by anyone in there. If you are a buyer or a seller in the transaction, you can see a bit more of the information in there, but mm -hmm. this is publicly available with hash data. Right. So you can run a compute function to the hash. If you receive the same hash, you know that nothing has been messed around with. So not only does it provide you with reconciliation, but then auditability, auditability rather, yeah. on the transactions that took place. Okay. So yeah, that is the transparency side of things. The fees, as we said, have been reduced quite significantly. And really that is it, you know, there's not, our CTO would probably complain that's not it, but really, like as far as kind of understanding. And what about the on, emissions part then? Uh, the fact that your less power is involved in this process, therefore the footprint is going to be uh, carbon footprint is lessened, basically. Exactly that. There's fewer nodes operating, and where you have to have these always on. So maybe you're using 30% of this node. Yeah. 50, 20. This might not be being used for that full capacity. Yeah. So you're wasting energy just having it on. Whereas this spins up, does the transaction, turns off. Yeah. So it's you're using the bandwidth on the network as it's required rather than it always being on. Okay. If that makes sense. Couple of questions. Yes. Um, from a buyer's perspective, from an agency's perspective, um, would they need to use a DSP to, to do to do this? I mean, so this is obviously you can argue this is the exchange piece. But the buy side uh, piece, is it like, do you have a DSP or do you integrate with other DSPs? How, how does that work from that, from that perspective? So we are, we have integrated a handful in the process yeah. of integrating more. Um, we will be building our own in the future just to, really what we want to have at the point is if you want to buy an ad, you come here. If you want to yeah. sell an ad, you come here. Yeah. That's really it. Everything else is taken place by this distributed network. Yeah. So it will feel very much like you were buying an ad on a Web2 exchange. Yeah. It's really this underlying kind of hidden infrastructure that is facilitating lower fees, more transparency. And so the infrastructure there. And then obviously then, you know, from the publisher's perspective, it's just putting your header in a wrapper and it's just part of that whole process. Exactly that. And what about from a, from a buyer's perspective as well? Listening to impressions or listening to bids, sorry, is, is very expensive. So from your, how are you sort of like reducing that cost? So obviously, you know, like a lot of the, the enterprise DSPs, the trade desks, the DV360s of the world, of the, the media master of the world, they spend a lot of time listening to specific uh, big queries. Mm -hmm. how, and that's a big cost, computing costs. How do you sort of negate that cost using this? Because that, that would be an interesting one from, yeah. from, a, from a buyer's perspective. So really, it's, it's really tied to the fees. Yeah. So, if you're listening a lot, there is a cost involved. In there that. is a cost, yeah. But when you find something you want to listen to, bidding yeah. is what you need to do to win that impression, yeah. game, obviously. That, again, because you're losing from your gross bid 47%, by the time your bid reaches the publisher's wrapper, it's not that competitive. Right. So by saying, okay, normally this might be a 5 to 10% win rate. Yeah. Varies. By having a dollar bid, let's say, that's now coming in as a 97 cent net bid, the win rate from what we've seen in early testing is 25%. Okay. So rather than having to query an exchange 20 times to win, yeah. it's now four times. So you're reducing queries. So that then, again, less process is taking place, more efficiency with your ad spend. Mm -hmm. It kind of allows you to be a bit more surgical with when you want to buy. Yeah. If you know that you can come in and have a fairly high probability of winning an ad, you can spend a lot more money in a period of time. And like around certain events, that could be very useful. Like yeah. half time at a football match, Skybet want to get as much media as possible. Yeah. Delivered within 15 minutes about the next best odds that are yeah. taking place. And I take it the DSP integrations, so they, on the DSP side, they can do data integrations if they want to. So like they can still have 
that piece, contextual ID, et cetera, that just fits into your exchange and exactly. runs the campaigns. So again, it's that open RTB bid object model. So DMPs know what they're getting sent, you can match cookies, it's all being surfaced in the bid request as it is right now. So again, any yeah, segments you might have, you target through your DSPs you normally would, you just get to take advantage of the lower fees and the increased transparency. And what has been the reception so far for this? Like you've, you've got a couple of interesting sort of uh, pilots yeah. going on, like uh, how, how publishers, how uh, agencies reacted to it? I think sometimes they're like, what's the catch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but I, you're, like, again, it's very, very, it's very important to boil it down to what this really is. is it's an infrastructure change, right? Like yeah. so you're leveraging sort of the blockchain infrastructure to build something that's actually, that hits those three things. And, you know, the power output, et cetera, the computational power required. You're almost sort of like, you're, you're continuing on the programmatic, but you're just, invert, you're just kind of like flipping the back end almost and how it works. Yeah, I think that one of the things we noticed the most is that I think that blockchain, NFTs is in the news all the time. So yeah. if you have someone that's kind of seen that almost in their personal life and it kind of crashes into their work life, you do kind of see someone that leads to, in. Yeah, and yeah. You're like, oh, okay, that's actually interesting. I can't get involved in this yeah, now. I've been yeah. looking for a bit of inertia to do it. And if it comes into your day job, it's as good as reason as any, right? And I think people are definitely interested in the transparency. I think that- it's Huge. Well, if you imagine like buying a house by looking through a letterbox, you're like, okay, the, the toilet might be nice, but you don't know because you can't see it, you know? And I think that's really what sometimes buyers are faced with. It's like, okay, we can see 30% of all of the data and 90% of the 30% we're saying is change your strategy. But mm. the rest of the 70% might be saying, don't change it, just persist. So you're kind of accidentally falling into what can be confirmation bias. So by just saying, okay, well, here's the keys, have a look around. Mm. You'll actually know the toilet is no good. It's next to the kitchen mm. or wherever it might be you'd make a different decision about whether you would then look to purchase that ad or not. Mm. Um, so I think generally has been a warm reception. I think it's something that if, you, if you've had a bad experience in crypto, that can be a bad reaction. But I think like, crypto, it's, it's, it's interesting because like people would just immediately go, oh, this is crypto, it's a blah, yeah. blah, blah. But really what you're it's doing not, is you're, no. you're just applying it's a good application of that technology for something actually that we have so many problems with ad tech, those three things, yeah. particularly the last one at the minute. You know, it, we need sort of solutions that kind of like, kind of reimagine, because I don't think like, the, I don't think the, the process of programmatic is broken. I think no, the I supply agree. chain yeah. is broken. I think addressing that with this type of technology is, is, is interesting. And I think it was, uh, it might be the wrong year, but in 2018, I think the IAB looked into blockchains as a solution yes. for, these issues and the net net of it was it's too slow yeah and it's too expensive I mean that was five years ago that's yeah. a very long time in any development space let alone one as exciting as a blockchain yeah. so a lot of those scaling issues cost issues associated to blockchain are being solved by some really really interesting roll-up technology which reduces fees batches transactions really isn't too different to what's going on here yeah, and, and the catch is people, I think Alchemy just wanted to disrupt the, uh, the, the broken system that we have. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank uh, Ben for that today. That was a great run through on, on those three key points and what you guys are trying to build. I think we'll probably go into this in more detail in the next couple of months, especially in the fee structure um, and how it's powered by sort of a blockchain piece in the next couple of months. So Ben, thanks very much. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. And that was Trader Talk TV and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>